Welcome to The Science Hutch. I'm Hutch, and this is The Science. And our science today involves AP Physics 1's investigation number two. It's all about Newton's second law of motion. At this point in your study of physics, you should be aware of Newton's first law and second law, and even the third law. Now, in American football, you're gonna see your linemen are gonna be really large men so that they have a large inertia and therefore don't accelerate very much from impact forces. Whereas your wide receivers, they're gonna have less mass or less inertia so that they can accelerate more and get out there downfield uh, faster. Also, the third law says, um, I like to quote Paul Blart, the mall cop, and say that uh, nobody wins in a headbutt. So you have these concussions happening from helmet impacts because whatever you do to one guy, the other guy does back to you. You're going to experience the exact same force when you go to tackle somebody. And just to kind of give it a little bit of practice, applying Newton's third law to cars moving down the road, it's not really the engine that directly moves the car and accelerates it. It's the car pushing against the road and then the road responds and pushes on the car's tires. The engine just gets the tires to, to get a little torque and gets the tires to push on the road. So car push earth backwards, earth push car forwards. And that's how you get your acceleration. All right, let's go check out the lab today. We're gonna to be playing with the modified Atwood machine. Let's see what that looks like. All righty, welcome to the lab area. Uh, joining me today is Science Tyler. Hey, Science Tyler. How you doing, Hutch? I'm doing good, thanks. All right, we're gonna show you how to set up your cars and track system so that it turns into a modified Atwood machine. I like to call this an M and M tabletop setup. Uh, we have an M, a hanging mass, and we have a whole collection of little masses that can go on these. So that's one M. The other M is the cart right here, which you'll find in your long boxes that are stored in the room. We only need one cart for this experiment, so we've taken this out, set it on the track, make sure it's in the runners, hanging over the numbers a little bit, and you're good to go. Then, Tyler, you mind to hold up the box of pulleys there? Yeah, you're gonna need to get a pulley out of there. La da da, there it is. It's got a little screw in the back. We're gonna place this on this end stop here on the track, like so and screw that in, la da 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 bing, ta ta ta. Make sure that the pulley is nice and vertical and not angled or anything. And then you wanna kinda make sure that it's level with the cart. You're also gonna need a string that's appropriate length. About a meter will do fine for the height of, height of our tables, which are about 80 centimeters off the ground. And the carts have a little hole right there that this paper clip is gonna fit really nicely through. La la la. Beautiful, and then the hanging mass goes over there. So now you have your M and M tabletop set up and it's a modified Atwood machine and that machine is just two masses with um, with a pulley in between them and they'll accelerate as a system that means that they'll accelerate together so if we let it go it's gonna do that okay so for the pre-lab you're gonna see this thing happen in four different parts so during the pre-lab we're gonna have um, collecting a velocity versus time graph of this cart in motion. And the first question we wanna ask is, what will the velocity versus time graph look like as this thing is moving along the track like that before I stopped it and pushed it back? Okay, so in part two of the pre-lab, we're gonna be asking the question, what will your velocity time graph look like if you increase the mass of the car. Your car's mass is already 500 grams. With this little piece on it, that adds about 20 grams or so. Tyler, do you mind to show in the long boxes for the carts, you'll actually find that nice little black mass there that Science Tyler has, and that is exactly 500 grams. So if you place that on the car there, that will double the mass of your cart. So now it goes from 500 and about 20 to 1,020. And we wanna see, does the velocity graph look different now that we've done that? Then the second thing you wanna do, thank you, Science Tyler, is to add mass to the hanging mass off the side. And we wanna predict, will the velocity time graph look different when we do that? So if we have a 30 gram mass here, we might wanna take another 20 here, put that on there, and see if 
you're gonna you know, get more or get a different looking velocity time graph now from the first time. And every time you're, you're kind of using your part one of your pre-lab as your control run, and now we're comparing, we're varying different things and, and seeing what the velocity time graph looks like in each case. All right, we're on to pre-lab part number three. And in this part, we're gonna be doubling everything. Double the fun, double the physics, but really you're gonna be doubling the mass of the cart and, and there's that, you're gonna be doubling the mass of the hanging mass. And the question is, when you compare this velocity graph for this new setup back to your control run in part one, are you gonna see a similar velocity graph or are you gonna see something different? So you can actually, you know, do you wanna set this up? We started with a 30 gram mass and so as physics Silence, Tyler has just done. He added 30 more grams, so now we're working with a 60 gram mass here, and we're working with a one kilogram car, and then we would hit play on the lab quest, hear this thing clicking like thunder, and then he would let it roll, and I would stop it gently on the other end, and we'd look at that velocity graph, compare it back to part one. Okay, in part four of the pre-lab, we're gonna be wondering what will the velocity time graph look like if the initial velocity of the system is not zero meters per second? So uh, Science Tyler is gonna demonstrate to you how you could get that going. If I were to click play on the lab quest and it's taking data now and a velocity, creating a velocity time graph, Tyler, go ahead and give that cart a non-zero initial velocity. Ah. Well, hello, that's the perfect thing to do. All right, so that's part four. And again, you're gonna be comparing that back to the original graph. One little side note that I forgot to mention, you note that we have taken the black mass off of the cart. We're back to original control masses. So we're back to our 30 gram mass on the hanging mass and our 500 gram cart. Okay, all right, you're gonna do those experiments now. So have fun physicsing with the pre-lab. Okay, the investigation happens in two parts. Part the first is gonna be a series of demonstrations where you're going to be observing and you're gonna be answering three questions. Question number one, what do you observe? Question number two, what can you measure? Question number three, what can you change? All right, so you were thinking about variables. So here we have uh, the first series of demonstrations is going to be varying the force on the system without varying the total mass of the system. Now the force that's accelerating the system is pretty much just the weight of the hanging mass. So we're gonna put that little baby 10 on there. And then we've laid the car, we've laden the car with an extra 100 grams. So now total mass of the system is 10, 20, 600, 500 for the car and 100 for this. So now we have 620 grams total mass for the system. You can change that up a little bit if you want, but I recommend that you use 10 gram increments in how you're gonna switch the masses. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna observe the acceleration of this system, taking data with that and looking at the velocity time graph and then seeing the acceleration out of that graph. Then we're going to take, uh, we're gonna add some mass there and in order to not change the total mass of the system, we're gonna have to take mass off of here. So we keep the total mass, that 620 grams. And we just kind of assembly line this and we just run this over and over collecting more and more acceleration, blah, 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 get the velocity time graph, slope on that, acceleration, new value. And we're seeing what's happening to the acceleration of the system while we change only the net force on the system without changing the mass of the system. All right, now we're ready for um, the, f the first part of the investigation, the second set of demonstrations where we're going to be varying the mass of the system but not changing the net force of the system. So you can either start with your cart uh, with extra mass on the cart and then be taking the mass off or you can start with an unladen cart, run that system, get the acceleration from the velocity time graph and then be adding mass to it and taking data points all the while leaving the 30 grams alone. That's the first part of the investigation. Part two, this is your turn. You've seen 
Science Tyler and Science Hutch modeling both parts of the investigation for you. Now it's your turn. You're going to design two activities, one in which you're calculating the acceleration of this M&M tabletop system by varying the mass of the system, but not changing the net force of the system. Then the second activity you're going to design is you're going to calculate the acceleration of the system by just varying the force without changing the mass of the system. So have fun, get out there, physics safely. Thank you for joining us. This has been Science Hutch and Science Tyler, and this was the science, I was the Hutch, he was the Tyler, and you're the physicist. So start physicsing. Have a great day.